Oh, we are going to, we are going ahead with this 11 edition of uh, Spectrum uh, from different parts of the world. We are meeting each other in this uh, virtual place. And today, during this panel, we'll be talking and before the break for lunch about Open RAM. This is a technology that um, have started to, uh, to awake more interest uh, among the different providers, suppliers, operators. Uh, there are governments involved in this, uh, the, this topic, finding out where it's heading to and what this means of having an MBA in finance and quantitative medicine with one school. And, Edinburgh University, United Kingdom. So with this introduction, we start a debate about open room. So I leave you with our moderator, Andrea Catalan. Hello, good afternoon, good afternoon all. Um, many thanks for participating and to for keeping us here together in this International Congress of Spectrum. Thank you, Anna, for calling me, for having me here at this and to act as moderator in this panel. We will be talking about an open run, that technology, uh, uh, radio access network that promise uh, a lot, that it has a lot involved in this, is a promise in respect to cost, to the, how easy it is to deploy it, infrastructure, how to expand the universe of providers that have now uh, united to this um, uh, ecosystem. And many of the questions of doubts, concerns that you may have that uh, come about as a result of new ecosystem. We have uh, uh, providers of equipment taking different decisions, some of them more well, better received than others, and others that maybe are not that convinced about this uh, new technologies. Uh, then we have this new, ecosystem of providers that are new to this field that stimulate, that promote, that encourage you know, everyone to try this and that everything will be easier and, and especially with open run. And we are seeing the first deployments uh, 5G and 4G in Latin America, Brazil and its government through its a regulator to take in a decisive position to promote an open RAN ecosystem before mobile 5G. And we see also in Brazil, some mega operators, even uh, uh, non-traditional operators um, that are not well known when it comes to the deployment of networks, they are undertaken a pilot test uh, in Argentina, there are pilot tests that are um, focused to the industrial, uh, to the industry, but this is all part of the new technology. They are the protagonists who are going to giving us what are their position, their view of this new uh, approach. If we need to put a deadline perhaps so to have uh, open RAM in a massive way, that massive presence in the market. And they're going to tell us where are they right now in this. Uh, I think they all have been introduced already and I will be giving the floor to each one of them so that they can present their views. I'm going to start by Nicolas Silva, Commissioner, expert of the Telecommunications Regulatory Commission. So Nicolas, welcome. Andrea, pleasure to greet you. Many thanks uh, for uh, having me here and also to Anne, uh, hosting this very important scenario that for some years now allow us to exchange points of view, elements, good news. Now, the relevance of this resource is quite important uh, for the development of the sector and the country. I'm going to share my screen briefly. And I'm going to present, uh, tell me if you can, yeah, we can see that perfectly. Very good. So time is short, so I want to uh, 
in the beginning to focus in what is uh, uh, a view from the regulator point of view. And it is there where it is worth, beyond the technical aspects, I think you mentioned that already, that now we need to uh, say, how do we perceive the development of our open RAM that becomes a promoter of competition and at the same time, a facilitator of investment for different agents. Uh, worth mentioning here that I, I'm talking of diverse, not referring to traditional operators, but also depending on the decisions taken at country levels and other uh, uh, stakeholders that have been enabled to, uh, let's say, make use of this scarce resource such as spectrum. So being a promoter of competition, we see that something quite positive, and there are many things, things still to be reviewed, but to start with, it's quite positive. What elements? Do we see there uh, to support this type of solution and platforms that are open and standardized? In principle, we understand that this is going to facilitate access and interconnection of uh, different operators, both internally, let's say if they are using different technologies, as well as uh, 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 between operators to facilitate communication between users in Latin America. It is essential because we have a single run to an open run. So we have a whole series of challenges and that the regulatory sandbox is what would allow open run to progress in this maturity process. Quickly, the open run alliance is something that just came out here of the combination of two forums. It was the fixed run forum and the open alliance. It was backed by the operators. It was the leaders so much so that the open run alliance have created two, 10 working groups of which all are led uh, jointly by the operators. So we have here in this slide, what you can see is the five main ones that are the founder ones. We have 28 operators. The majority is also our customers. And that's the reason why Nokian is participating actively in this process. Nokia is a company that is totally convinced of how important it is to have open technologies, open systems that actually allow this and there's, and then obviously, uh, not all manufacturers are participating here and the participative of these uh, have been varying and this is the process as we progress there and we're incorporating new players. We do have a great quantity and then we have this development of the software and so on and then, uh, and then we have of equipment and then we have there, all of them come here to try to find here and then to see the open ran and then we have um and then we would have more competition of course if we observe in this slide and then we have of the open ran alliance and then the majority of them there nokia is participating and it's the co-leader in two of them and then we have the the essential ones in this process one has to do with the rig, and then has to do with the phone fall. For us at Nokia, what is fundamental is it's a uh, global adoption of the rents and so on. There we will have a fragmentation of the market that they don't exist there, and then we have there, and then uh, open run would be it actually be open, and then we have there that interest in and then to open RAM that they could ask or interconnect one with the other. This is key. And then we have there, so that we don't achieve the famous concept of the open, we will continue to have prior, uh, proprietary solutions or some that actually can interact with some with the other, but not with all the ones who are interested in promoting an open RAN. And for us, another thing that is also very important is that we don't have an overlap between the works that something is one doing with 3GP and the work that has been doing with the Open RAN Alliance. 
right now in this graph, what you can see, what you can observe is what is you're seeking with the open run. This is, here you can see uh, the radio units, the distribution ones, the control units. And the point is, and the goal is, at the end of the day, obviously depending on the definition of the operator and the definition and the decision of the operator is to have an operator, for example, for the radio units and uh, a, a different one for the distribution one. And this actually, how can this be achieved through a standardization of connections between one and the other? And this standardization is essential. Without this, it is very difficult to connect two different uh, providers and that we actually get the result that we're having at the end of the day of a single RAM, with which this part is very, very important. And then as this process is a process, a progressive process, jointly with this, we have a, a new element that we have established with the Open RAM Alliance, and it's the Rickle RAM Intelligent Controller. And it gives them the intelligence that the RAM needs to be able to operate. All of this has to work in the best way possible so that the service provision of the final uh, by the operator be as good or even better than what is being provided with the single RAM. This is a great challenge. Here we have an important work that operators must make so that we can actually have the integration between the different uh, players. Among all of them, they can connect, they can communicate, and they can actually provide the quality services that we require by the regulator in each one of the countries. That is why we consider that all of this is a, a process by stages and that the maturity of the open RAM, we can actually have it there by the year 2024 or 2025. We at Nokia already have the equipment that we are supplying in the open RAM compliance. And then the goal of Nokia is for 2025 to have the totality of our equipment ready to operate open RAM. We can operate single RAM, but we can also can operate open RAM. And then common as a conclusion of the different messages that I wish to convey with you today, we as Nokia are absolutely convinced of the importance of Open RAN. We invest in Open RAN and we lead several jobs in the Open RAN Alliance precisely to make of this a reality. Well, right now, the fact that we combine different vendors, a multiplicity of vendors, and to carry out that clouding there it says actually we are starting in this process and the expectation of having a plug and play that's actually to have the equipment that you just connect it and starts to work that's going to take a while as i mentioned and the expectation is for 2025 onwards that will work so here it's actually very important the performance the solutions that were there, there and the possibility is that between all the different players we can actually interact without having any type of interruption in the service. The stability of the system is essential and so on because this is in the end what uh, controls, what is controlled by the regulators in as far as the quality of service, but it's also in the interest of the operator to provide the best of the services possible. With this, the system has to be stable. The system has to have all the features that normally that these type of networks have and here in the worlds of features, what we have also is a great uh, pressure to on the devices and so on. These devices are actually creating new features that also have to be replicated in the network with which it is a process of constant evolution. And this is one of the great challenges of the open RAM, the different components that they all have, all the necessary features to be able to provide the service in, in a scale of 5G or, or 6G. And in time, we can achieve this uh, reduction in the cost and this greater uh, competition that we're going to observe in Open RAN. And at the end, we in Dallas have an Open RAN center 
where we do a great uh, array of demos, but we do a whole set of testing. And this is one more sample of the importance that Nokia is designated to open RAM. And with this, Andrea, it's all yours. Thank you very much. Thank you, Celedonia. Very interesting. One of the uh, doubts that we have here in the open run is that if effectively the operators are going to be able to generate additional revenues as of this, or if it's really going to just going to be an efficiency cost. There's how you're seeing from Nokia and within the framework of the uh, Oran Alliance. Well, I think that the operators are actually very interested in for turning this into a success. Let's just say that they have been the founders and the ones who started all this process after so many players who were being added and so on, among them Nokia and so on. And with that, well worked in achieving that we actually have an open now, and then we have the essential one and so on, and then we have to interact with anyone and so on, and that the content that we have with each one so that we have their, what we worst can do in there, uh, and we can do there. And then we have the challenges uh, that we have, uh, then we can have there a, a mobile web and so on, that we have a process in there. And then we have of experience and we have to uh, go to a open ramp. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Celedonia, and it's always a pleasure to hear you, but now we're going to go to other of the companies that has also decided to progress towards open RAM in a decisive matter. We're talking about Intel, and we're going to present to Fraze and then uh, Avar Wong, which is the VI Business Development Reserve. Present, welcome. Prasant, uh, we're willing to hear your presentation from Intel. Please, the mic is all yours, sir. Hi, Andrea. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for inviting Intel and giving us this opportunity to present our view. So let me share my screen. So can everybody see my screen? Okay, thank you. So let me try to take a little bit back step and then see, want to present uh, what is the actual issue we are trying to address here with Open RAN. As uh, we all know, that's uh, the mobile networks, uh, they, are, they serve more than 9 billion connections and generate almost $1 trillion in service revenue as per some research. So this is a vast network, it's the biggest network. And you can see the RAN is the most important distributed network infrastructure in the whole world. And if you think in terms of the whole mobile network, you can see the RAN is also most expensive part of this mobile network in terms of CapEx and OPEX. And if you include like uh, radio heads, antennas, and all the equipments, it's a most expensive part. And then we have all these challenges to deliver additional capacity, cost saving as the new services are coming in the 5G area. How there's a challenge, how can the operator just deliver all this new capacity and without expanding too much on those legacy networks? And we have already seen from the last few years, like core networks, they're already using the benefits of virtualization. They've already moved on to all this cloud computation, those things. But somehow RAN is a little bit lagging from historical because focus was not that much on LAN, RAN, but it was on the core network. But we see now that things are changing and the RAN architecture is also evolving in stages. So they are moving from the traditional distributed model to going towards the fully virtualized implementations. And as my colleagues from Nokia and others say, then it's a, it's a trend it's moving from the inside. Let me go to the next one. As I say, the as you can see from this side, from the left hand side, you have the what we call the traditional RAN model, which is there from long time. And we know that RAN network is changing, and in the last twenty years, we have seen some changes. We move move from like uh, radios to RRUs to ground based, but slowly, slowly, it's moving. But now we think there is a point. Now there is a kind of transition going on. Now the RAN industry is moving towards the cloud RAN, 
and towards the open RAN. So just to give you idea, let's say what we say about the cloud RAN, which is kind of we try to put it, as you can see in the middle one. So mainly it's the migration to the cloud native containerized RAN software. So it's still working. Let's you can see the interfaces are maybe still closed, but uh, it's moving towards the cloud platform. So we are using the course hardware. And uh, this is, you can see that our, this Intel's network transformation vision for the telecom community is all, we always included RAN. As we saw this transition play out in the 4G, 5G core networks, and now we can see the network transformation, it's uh, going towards the RAN. So players are putting mm, this uh, still the basement solution, bringing the course hardware, and they're trying to use the all the value and the benefits coming from the cloud combination, containerization. And we see that uh, you see some reports like uh, from the Dell Oro project, you see that they see open RAN is going to be like a $5 billion market by 2025. So it's all these things are moving toward the virtualizations. But now if you see towards the right side, which I put like an open RAN, so how we differentiate mainly between cloud RAN and open RAN, and to be honest, sometimes people call this open VRAN also, which is open virtualized RAN. So it's open RAN is mainly the definition of inter-vendor interfaces where you have the open interfaces. And some people say you can have like plug and play. You can choose the radio head from some small vendor, and then you can have the software from other providers. And it, it bring the innovation. So so far, the small players who were thinking they cannot compete in the RAN market because they say like to provide the complete solution, they see this opportunity is bringing the more innovation and then it's matching the, they can concentrate on smaller parts. And by bringing all this uh, mixing and matching of the traditional RAN subcomponent, it will inevitably, it will speed the innovation to market. It improve the costs, and it create a more robust 5G ecosystem. And we, as uh, we know that uh, this ORAN Alliance is working to define these interfaces. And there's another groups like TIP who is working on the commercial parts also. So there's a lot of movement going on this open RAN. And uh, is the, with them and now putting all these interfaces and then bringing the like uh, RAN intelligent controller like the RIC. So it's uh, making a little bit more practical and making it more feasible. And Intel is in forefront of this all innovations. And for example, RIC also, we are working with various partners like Cellwise, Coher, VMware, Amdox. And to be honest, for whole ecosystem with my fellow panelists, we are very working with all the like Nokia, Ericsson, Parallel Wireless, and we're working to create the whole ecosystem. Okay, I'm a little bit cut your time. So just my last slide, so just to give you a little bit more idea, that's uh, why should we adopt this open and cloud RAN? So if you see, we know now what problem we are trying to solve, which was the RAN. Now we see the different flavor, which I explained earlier slide, the cloud RAN, open RAN. So what are the main reasons? So as I mentioned, it's like a, if you have a common hardware platform in the, across all the workloads, it will reduce the operational cost because you can use the same hardware across the network load at the RAN side. And it will it lowers the barrier to entry for the new RAN vendors. It creates a flexible infrastructure where the workload can be moved from core to the edge. And it's enabled the best performance for the given network slide. And as you can simplify SKUs because it's a common hardware, it's uh, operationally you are in better shape and it's reduced all your training, spares, hardware designs. So from operational perspective also, it's much easier to have this course hardware. Other thing is I would like to point is like, you said a uh, disaggregation of hardware and software. So it will just enable the commoditization of hardware and then it reduce the time to these new software features. As earlier, we were talking like uh, new feature releases for months or years. Now we're talking like weeks. So you can, by disaggregation, you can, again, foster the innovation, bring the new features fast. And it's a faster innovation. It uh, allows the uh, operator and other organization to direct their R&D investment 
into the hyperscalers. So it's like a fast innovation you can do. It's a silicon refresh every year, the workload accelerators, tools. And it's just the all in this one. So they just enables the more robust 5G ecosystem. So you can have these vendors, servers, radio, filtration. And ultimately in the last one, so you will get the cloud native benefits. We, we all know this is like slicing, pooling, increased resource utilization. We know the IT has already using this benefit. They are already getting all the benefits from cloud computing. And the core also started, but RAN was a little bit behind. But in the end, I would just like to say that Intel is fully committed to open RAN. And we work with the, all the ecosystem partners, with the traditional vendors and the new vendors. And our aim is just to create the whole ecosystem so that it can be beneficial for everybody. Thanks, that's all. Any questions? Muchas gracias, Frasan. Mencionaste el tema de... Thank you very much, Frasan. You mentioned R&D and certain players in the market when one speaks with them about Open RAN. They actually point out that Open RAN possibly they doubt it, they put it in doubt. Perhaps for some interest, they're not being open about, but it doesn't generate the same level of R&D that uh, have been uh, uh, placed in prior stages when they're actually provisioning. You, uh, with what you just mentioned, you, you are um, precisely uh, preaching the opposite, that R&D that is actually being applied to to the generation of this ecosystem is just as important as the one that we have known in prior ages, no? Isn't that right? Yes, absolutely. And to be honest, if you think in terms of R&D, what OpenRAN is bringing, it's bringing many new players, niche players. And from there, you get the innovation. So, okay, in the traditional way, you have some big companies, okay, they were doing big R&D budgets. But the smaller companies, they were not able to come into the market. But here I can see that uh, the way open RAN works, uh, that uh, it provide more opportunities for even the governments also. As you can see from the Europe and from United Kingdom where I am, the governments are putting a lot of R&D budget. They want to generate the local expertise. And this open RAN allows uh, to you have to smaller companies, which uh, may be in Colombia also. You can have your local, let's say, radio vendors they can do on their own R&Ds and they can generate their products. So in one way, the in overall system, you say it's very good for R&Ds, R&Ds and the smaller companies to come and produce the niche products. So we certainly see from Intel's point of view, we Intel is investing heavily in terms of you see the most of the pilots running on our Xeon processors and we bringing the new technologies and new processors, new workload can do. So we think it's a really good and from our side IntelliS had fully committed to in the R&D Muchísimas gracias. Thank you. Thank you, President. Really, it's been a, a, to, to have the opportunity to share this venue with you and we will continue the dialogue now with the rest of the guest speakers and it is now the turn for Russell Ribeiro who is the Vice President, Regional Vice President for Latin America of Parallel, precisely one of those companies that um, adhere to this new ecosystem. So welcome, uh, Resent. Uh, yes, actually, excuse my Portuguese and Spanish mix. I hope you understand. Look, I have actually decided to do um, not to post my, my, my presentation because everybody has covered just about everything that I have to do about RAN. So I'm going to now take the special, take the space to, to mention my, my, my takeaways. Uh, first of all, I want to thank a and &E for their invitation. My greetings to Nicholas and to all my panel guest speakers in this world. A parallel wireless is a, a Hobbit company and it's one of the ones that we have here um, and the ones that are the only one that decided didn't actually to or participate in open run throughout their life history because we were born as open run so we didn't decide to to participate in right we were born in open, in open run so really we started a, 
about 10 years ago with this concept because we saw that the market was very stopped, very stagnant. There was not, there was no type of technological progress actually there and it, there are no quick entry to market and it didn't give the assurance that the operators can actually work in also the nations, the countries. Why? Because we saw not long ago with the pandemic that the, inf the telecommunications infrastructure there's, is actually very, very important. I think that if it's just as important for the infrastructure of Strata or, or any uh, some of those communities, because without any communications, you would see how the, the economy just shrinks. So obviously communications, within the communications, we need mobile communications today, or perhaps the lion's share Although the price is actually raising and the mobile ones are the ones that is going to probably going to continue its preponderance. Now, obviously, it is extremely export important that the achievements of Open RAM that today is actually an innovative trend that will not be stopped. It will continue. It will continue, as my uh, uh, colleague has spoke before, it's actually going to mature ever more, and we're going to use this technology to change it even further. Now, the importance of all of this for operators are many, actually. Firstly, they would diversify the market, they would diversify the ecosystems, and obviously ready for, uh, for us. We have analogy of what is open RAM when we explain for open RAM, so for someone who doesn't know it, and we have a very interesting one with uh, what we had, we had what happened with the mainframes, and then we actually had the uh, the PCs, and our friends of Intel must understand all that too well because I mean the 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 computer market changed because the manufacturers are men this, but the the ma the software manufacturer even more numerous ones. No one depends on anything before with the mainframes. You had to buy with the company, the mainframes, the, app, the apps, the services, and so on. And everything was with them, but we had a problem with that manufacturer. You had an enormous problem. What happens with one of those companies that had those things, that they had enormous problems with, with one of those manufacturers, and that they're no longer in the market. Open, ham, open RAM is what you have there, is actually to have an ecosystem because you are diversified there, so that you can have a company that is a small company can actually come there and provide services uh, at a different uh, software niche or hardware that with that they can uh, come out on top and, and the market comes out on top because now we have there, because now you have agility to provide so many options and solutions. For example, we are right now with a certain degree, we have more than 70 customers in throughout the world. And in Latin America, we only have a few, not many, but the ones that we do have are beginning to move and understand how to implement these services with times that actually almost like 50% greater than we had before. What does that mean? Time to market, and time to market is money. Innovation is also money. With innovation and time to market, with a totally radio system that actually works, and quickly you can do this deployment of services, no, or commissions as well or to commission another and with that, you can actually go in the market and you can see and see what is actually specified. So with this, an operator has a capacity that's very large to monetize their invention, that to do things that before they couldn't do. And another area of costs, you can reduce them there because we now have some feedback of customs throughout the world that actually can see how they, they can reduce the 70% of their we have of where the operator is is there because obviously an operator that is there in Colombia, you have an energy, the one that you have there that actually you could have another one. And then obviously the consumptions actually do uh, vary. And then all of this can vary. So the PCOs can have or induction that we can have of uh, the ones of the network are going to vary according to where they are. But now we have the feedback of the customers here that we have varied to 30%. And this is what we want. This is the vision as to where we want open RAM. Do we have that view? We're growing with that vision. We're contributing to technology. There's, we have today a company that is very large 
There's actually more than 700 employees in three worlds and 300 of them in development. And one in India, one in Tel Aviv, in Israel, we're bringing technologies to the market and so on. So obviously we are uh, having there and so we have there. So we have many there, the, as Celedonio says, and, there, and then I concur fully and so on. But we are doing, and this is, and this is uh, the ones that there, and and then you have there. Uh, we have um, then we have there that actually have brought some vendor and so on, and then we have there to the interest of this the enormous to grow the ecosystems because with this growing, you have more vendors, and by having more vendors, you can have greater negotiation. And then you have more activity okay. with this, with the automation. Parece que estoy escuchando alguien que está me dando retroalimentación de traducción. Sí, ahí, ahí está, ahí estamos bien de nuevo, Pásela, ahí estamos. Entonces, con la automación también es el uso de costo. Entonces, esta situación ha atraído los operadores de todo el mundo que están obviamente. also to have the capability to deploy, deploy that as quicker. So in that step we are, and we are very happy of uh, having uh, Aura where we are right now. Right now we can support because the GPP is uh, launching theirs, but uh, they need to look up for, and this is a journey this is a journey of a day by day and we are in that journey the clients that are with us are pretty happy obviously we hope that this will grow and that many people new members can come in and that we can have a strong ecosystem that is all of my part that if you have more questions i'm ready to answer yeah very good we're speaking a lot about private networks uh, as from open ram open ram will allow companies to manage uh, definitely their own private network with efficiency how do you see that process because that of course is part of a trend or how are you seeing that yes it is a trend no doubt uh, open net uh, uh, private networks will be very strong in 5g that is a trend that will continue it would not stop but i would like to say that open ram is not only 5g 5g is just one of the technologies that uh, we are going to take benefit of open ram because obviously as you said i was sent yeah not to worry that things happens during a conference Maybe one of my customers is ringing to me. But okay, I will answer him after my participation. I will say it, the privates are going to exploit 5G to the maximum, as well as the need to deploy uh, what we call new region. That is going to be enormous because obviously the freak mainly in a millimetric wave is six gigas. We are going to have a lot of coverage. In other words, a lot of where a lot of micro bases, micro towers, stations. This is going to grow, and this is going to be a solution that uh, is going to be mandatory. In the same way, in the private networks, you are going to need that because you want to cover a mine or you are going to cover your manufacturing facility, you will need a technology that is not going to be that expensive. It is going to be with 5G. So we believe that this market is going to grow and people are going to exploit it to the maximum open room. It's available also in 2, 3G, 3G and 4G, not only 5G. Yes, you answered my question. Colombia right now has one of the open RAN implementation in 4G in existence right now. So many thanks and go and ring that client that was calling you. Many thanks and in that 
way we are going to give way to our last speaker of this panel we are going to introduce fabio monge the head of resales of latin america of ericsson and he is going to tell us uh, what the company is doing in respect to open rest so fabian welcome hello and pleasure and thanks for having me here it's a pleasure to share this panel with you with russell and Bistan. Salonia and Nicholas as well. And of course, to talk about this is such an interesting topic that, uh, that as an open remedy. So as Salidonia was saying, um, in the same way, Ericsson is part of the Open Ren Alliance, which is uh, it tries to determine these technical specifications uh, to have uh, architecture for uh, radio, access to radio for 4G, 5G. Something we mustn't forget is that in Latin America at the end of 2020, the uh, traffic in 4G was uh, 55% according to the Ericsson's uh, study that is available in our webpage. And towards 2026, we still is going to have an important participation in the 55%. Because in the case of Colombia, for instance, we have, according to global data, uh, penetration in 4G, 47%. So it's important not to leave aside that also 3G, which is also important for three for voice. And we need to provide solutions and keep those solutions as we go and introduce new technologies such as 5G and, of course, 4G as well. So... Ericsson is a provider and worldwide leader in patents in 5G technology. We believe in competition, and there's a competition that is bringing us our open round, the first steps of development, and give us the possibility of being quite innovative. And for that reason, a part of it, our clients are a part of the Open Round Alliance. We uh, believe in, the, in standardization. We also believe that be it by being active participants, we need to work uh, jointly with the needs of uh, the providers and their needs in order to generate an aperture of this required flexibility of the networks that, as Salonio was saying before, is uh, the case. Uh, uh, it looks like I have an issue of connectivity that's been solved. Can you hear me well? Yeah, we are okay. Using. Well, I think that nowadays we have a radio architecture where platforms and no dub are integrated in hardware and software. And that uh, vision of creating an aperture goes through the separation, the aggregation of different open interfaces and possibly virtualization. As uh, we heard before, it's going to help us to be more competitive and bring in more innovation without forgetting an important aspect that uh, uh, that's why I will open RAM was born, and that is to reduce the cost of investment that at this very moment looks, we are not right there, but evolution will take us there. As, as Nicholas mentioned, around 2024, 2025, we will begin to see a real efficiency in, in CapEx as well as in OPEX, mainly because in the initial stages, we are going to have a high cost uh, interoperability and cost of integration between the different solutions of different providers. So. It is also true that there is a focus in radio, 4G, 5G, but the end that uh, aligns with current determine the technical specifications, even though it's not a CDO or final organization standard as is a 3GPP. So to increase the, uh, the open of the industry to do through the different Gs, 3G, 4G, 5G, uh, and 3GPP, and so as 4G and 5G and possibly 6G in some years. Now there's 3G PP have 100 open interfaces. So really it's not an open concept. It's really a trend to be able to and to be able to disaggregate this, uh, as Russell and Petitian mentioned before, to have a great number of providers and software that are being included in the current message. And finally, I think it's important to say that what we see in Ericsson, maybe what is most important, we have three 
to the Alliance. In fact, automation, clarification, and the opening of the internal interfaces of the radio. Ericsson offers today a, a, a cloud RAM. Cloud RAM offers a cl a cloudification, as it's been called, and certain functions of network. And we are announcing a few days ago, actually we did the announcement, the service management orchestration at the very end is a platform for, uh, for clouding that will allow to support eight out of the 10 open interfaces that uh, we have in the Oregon Alliance. Uh, in the third quarter, 176 never 5G launch in the world, and out of those never there is none in open RAN. So it goes through that, the need to see at what point in time the market is going to take the decision to start investing in 5G as a real final solution and sustainable in time. And basically, um, it is because of that that we are in that uh, long path of evolution of that path of interoperability of different network architectures. And why not with uh, to keep, maintain the three principles that I just mentioned that somehow were defined by uh, OEC three countries, that is to maintain the security of information, number two, to have a good performance on networks, energy efficiency and resilience that we require in order to introduce additional services in the network. Today, 5G is being commercialized around the world. We are present in 96 networks around the world, more or less in 48, 49 countries currently, but only one third of use cases are being monetized, that means that we still have two thirds to work upon, according to our studies. The potential market that we need to develop together with network operators. And finally, to say maybe um, in respect to standardization, one of our principles, we believe in standardization and the need to uh, make sure that we all work under the same rules and the same functions, let's say, so that the competition is really the right one. We also believe uh, what uh, OECD countries have been doing, that is to regulate under a uh, neutral technology framework. And that is not to specify a technology and regulation, but to leave it open to the potential uh, all the flavors that we can find in the market, leave it for that. Uh, and that could, let's say, provide facility of interconnection between different countries. Of course, US and between US and Europe and the Japan, uh, a number of mechanisms, this mechanism should be considered when I was stating the regulations. And that's why we are participating in the Oregon Alliance. And there are many external tests, as Russell mentioned, outside Latin America, as well as within Latin America, that we are convinced will bring in a lot of efficiency in the near future once we have a more mature technology. Thank you. Thank you, Fabian. Fabian. There is a general coincidence here in this panel that this is going to benefit all. Of course, if there is someone that there is not going to benefit from it, as from the beginning, arriving of an open RAM, maybe some operator. Is there any uh, damage or, or is a trend that will benefit the entire telecommunications industry as a whole? So we believe from the point of view, Ericsson, that uh, no one is going to be uh, harmed, but uh, actually uh, uh, we are looking for a m more in innovation intensity. And from that point of view, this can say that it's a disruptive technology. We are going to do uh, to uh, deal with this challenge and the same as we were building our networks, provided there is transparency, provided their uh, information is uh, assured, the information of a final user assignment, and now that the performance of the network is the right one, 
well, then, then only benefits will be provided to the entire sector industry group. Yes, I was thinking while I was listening to you that what happens with the security of uh, open RAN networks, if they can provide the same guarantee, if, if, if that is the right word, no, than traditional networks. I don't know if some of that has have to do, you remember, uh, out of 100, out of the 160 C's 5G networks, none has open RAN so far. I think that that security is going to arrive uh, as it is right now in 3GPP. Maybe and the 176 networks worldwide launched so far, they go through the interoperability with 4G and 3G. That's a stage. More than security, you know, but uh, as we have said, in all panels we have said, we still need some maturity in that to see what is going to f happen in the next five to six years. At least in Latin America, we start, or let's say, continue shutting down 2G and 3G, and then the focus will be on 4G and 5G only. Why not? We want to be ambitious in 6G. Well, Fabian, man, a lot. thanks a lot for your presentation. I close in this panel with some concepts that were mentioned by you throughout this, uh, let's say, last half 30 minutes. There is a coincidence that there we are traveling a road towards maturity and research and development. It's there, uh, and that definitely is going to generate more information as from the commitment different stakeholders are undertaken. The previously uh, uh, access to the current stage that definitely the secret is the standardization so that everything is just one open ecosystem at the end of the day. Also, at the end of the day, it will benefit operators that need definitely generate new revenue because the industry uh, needs that to be sustainable. So I thanks to all of you, Nicolas, Nicolas Silva, many thanks. <laughs> Many thanks for San, Arawan, um, Fabian, uh, Russell Rivero, and yeah, Fabian once more monkey for this panel. We will continue traveling as we have heard, uh, as, uh, as we were working towards maturity, uh, the slogan of our musical group in Argentina. Many thanks. I know we are going to lunch for lunch, but I return the floor to those that are and the floor uh, hearing to us.